driving force of any enterprise is vision. Without it, life, an intention or a goal looks blurred or remains in a vacuum or an illusion. I, I started by actually having a, a, I mean, a defined vision in terms of what I, I would like to achieve in the university as the Vice Chancellor. When I started work on November 1, 2017, and uh, I had what I call the trade point agenda. Not necessarily wanting to be different in terms of the vision and mission of the university, but to be able to really keep myself focused. When vision is shared among the officers and rank and file, execution becomes easier. The driving factor uh, for all these developments you have seen or you are seeing is the management style. My own understanding is the management style led by our vice chancellor. You know, the, the vision line is clear. Before we came on board, there were many projects struggling on this campus. Some, uh, there was no answer to how they could be finished, but um, when he took over, the approach to things changed. The task force approach. It's both planning, implementation, and uh, monitoring. No wonder the Federal University of Agriculture, FUNAP, has become a campus with avalanche of ongoing and completed projects meant to fulfill the nexus of teaching, research, and extension services. The core mandate of the university, Professor Felix Kolaoli Salako, remains committed to in the last five years as a man with vision. His administration's impact is visible in every aspect of what makes an ivory tower fulfill the toga of town and gown connection, the ultimate for an institution worthy of its onions. The leadership has been engrossed in how to turn to best those things met on ground and add other values that would make them competitive, exceptional and more beneficial to all the various segments being served. Many of such projects were creatively conceptualized, constructively and uniquely executed and positioned to meet the needs and yearnings of both the university populace as well as adjoining communities. Occupying a place of relevance, distinction and unquantifiable benefits is the dam project constructed at the Mauko end of the institution. 
This project is not just for project execution's sake, but in realization of meeting the core mandates of teaching, research, and extension services. This project, very dear to the heart of the leadership of the university, was conceived in 2018, but could not be completed in a record time due to COVID-19 lockdown. According to the site engineer of the project contractor, H5, engineer Adebayo Olukayode, the dam would provide raw water for both domestic and commercial use of the university, irrigation, fishing via Cajun system, and with an installation of a turbine, it has the prospect of generating electricity for the university community. Professor Salako corroborates on the objectives for embarking on the project. The construction of dam, apart from the idea of providing portable water, is also to aid the teaching environment. Definitely you need water in the laboratory. And then by the time we, we reticulate the, the uh, portable water or refined water around the campus definitely is going to assist in terms of convenience and training. Um, the irrigation facility I mentioned and uh, there is an attempt to pump water down here. As an administration concerned with taking the university to a higher pedestal of international repute, numerous enduring legacy projects were carefully executed to accomplish not just its mandates but also make it much more competitive globally. No wonder FINAB, under the current ranking of academic universities in the world, is within the bracket of 201 to 300 in best 1,000 universities out of 2,500 so rated in the field of veterinary sciences. CADIS, Center of Excellence in Agricultural Development and Sustainable Environment, is an international center established for postgraduate training of candidates from within Nigeria and African countries to broaden the frontiers of exchange of knowledge and learning in the region. Many of the graduates from the center who were from outside the country have become policy formulators and game changers in their respective countries, given the knowledge impacted on them with the huge investment in the facilities provided for the center. In order to make learning a worthwhile enterprise, necessary inputs to ensure the labors of the founding fathers were not in vain, were put in place. Library is a major entry in a thriving learning environment. Apart from ensuring that current texts were supplied to the unit, the vice chancellor, as a focus administrator, has within his tenure built on what he met on ground by taking the library to another level with the completion of an ultra-modern ICT-compliant library annex named after the first Nigerian Nobel laureate and literary giant, Professor Wally Shoyinka. On extension services, one of the major mandates of the university, efforts were geared towards advancing on what was met on ground in terms of farming activities in both food and cash crops not just to improve internally generated revenue, but also to aggregate on opportunities available to advance quality teaching, nurture professional agriculturists, as well as provide for the immediate needs of the various communities in and around the institution. Such items like gari, oil palm, cashew nut products, honey, yams, maize and other related edibles. The lockdown as a result of COVID-19 pandemic and the prolonged acid strike were different kettle of fishes for the leadership of this administration eager to make a mac and get purpose fulfilled. Rather than sitting at home doing nothing, we work more in terms of development of the university during COVID-19 lockdown and during the strike. During the COVID-19 lockdown, we actually moved swiftly into agricultural production because we are taught or we knew that time that with the lockdown, there will be food crisis after the lockdown. Farmers were not going out. Market women were restricted. Movement was restricted. We saw the opportunity to intensify agricultural production and we did that in 2020. 
So the the lockdown actually provided a, a opportunity for me in particular to re-strategize in terms of uh, infrastructural development. And that's where we can talk about this. We didn't go to sleep. In fact, during that period, we had people who are sleeping, I mean, artisans who are sleeping on site, doing their work. And uh, I want to thank God that all that happened because inflation will have taken the steam out of our achievements. The issue of strike, it, it's become part of the university system in Nigeria. Professor Olusha Lababatunde Kende, who is the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Development, explains the steps taken by the university to keep revenue yielding ventures functioning during industrial lockouts. The Office of Deputy Vice Chancellor of Development superintends over about 15 directories and units. And I can say that within the limited time that I have been here, we have ensured that these directories and units have optimized, their, they have increased their performance in terms of delivery of their mandates. The different units talk about the university farms. In the university farms, we have ensured that the, the equipment that the vice chancellor in the past three, four years, you see, he actually did a lot in terms of procuring implements, equipment, machineries for the university. So, in the past few months and up to a year, we have increased our capacity to fully utilize this equipment. So, we can say that the Directorate of University Farms have, has really expanded in terms of its activities. The same goes for the University Zoological Park. We have a zoo park, and in that zoo park, something new is coming up now, which we hope that the Vice Chancellor will be able to at least almost complete it to a very high degree, and that is an amusement park in the University Zoo. We've been trying to bring up all these units. There are about 16 of them, 16 of them. And so he inst instituted the issue of floating a company, like a private company. We call it FUNAB Integrated Ventures. So all those units, we now put them under FUNAB Integrated Ventures that will be more or less self-sustaining and self-running we will get our own staff. Staff will be recruited. They will be managed. And the other aspect of this is that we, the, the, the immediate community, and by and large, even beyond the Egba community, Abelkuta community, the Ogun State community, will feel the impact of this university in terms of food production, in terms of value addition to the different products, the produce that we are making from here. So that is currently ongoing. And we sincerely believe all these units will be up and running very well. And in fact, we will add other ones because there have been other ideas of things that we can do, but that we've been thinking, oh, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? But we now have a vehicle. And that vehicle is a FUNAB Integrated Ventures that is running like a business entity and that will deliver on the mandate of the university. Vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, there are tripoda mandate, teaching, research, and community engagement extension. As an all-encompassing focused administrator, as much as Professor Salako was concerned in making his staff walk his talk, he was also mindful of how best to enhance their capacity for optimum benefit and for the advancement of the university as a citadel of excellence. Both local and overseas trainings were accorded staffers while promotions were given to them regularly. The Registrar of FINAB, Dr. Akim Bola Adekola, amplifies more the bold steps taken by the administration to give meaning to motivating staff. We can beat our chest and say that in the life of this administration, we have performed excellently well. I said excellently well because I know that be it academic, senior or junior non-teaching, be it technologist, technical, professional, or even junior staff, we have been fair to all. We have ensured that nobody who deserves to be promoted miss or miss, uh, miss the promotion at any point in time. We have not only ensured that they didn't miss promotion, but we ensure the timeliness 
of the promotion to ensure that the processing was done fast enough to ensure that uh, they don't have to wait or to be looking forward to such promotion. Every process was made transparent and um, staff themselves can attest to it that um, under this administration, I can tell you, for instance, what used to be a rank course exercise that will start having an appeal. In fact, the, my first three weeks in office, I received about 25, 25 petitions against, against promotion irregularity, protests, appeals against uh, decision taking at registry review. To the grace of Almighty God, we have conducted five. Nobody has appealed against any decision that we have taken at our uh, promotion interview. Not only that we liberalized the process, we made it open that everybody can know why he didn't get promotion if it happens. And for that reason, all the cadres have been treated fairly. So in terms of promotion, we have done well. And I mentioned that we were, in the course of the promotion too, there is another aspect of it that staff always clamor for and usually even, usually even become issues of agitation with the unions. Without them prompting us, we have done a lot of conversions for staff who have additional professional and uh, educational certificates to qualify them for some other cadres in the university. Be it the technologies, some of them who are just lab assistants who have been able to get the HND, we have converted them laterally into the technology scheda. We have given the same treatment to professional accountants in the bursary, from executive officers in the registry. And I want to also tell you that in the history of this university, we have converted the largest number of non-teaching staff to academic staff. But what are the legacies this administration would be leaving behind? University Bossa, Mr. Chuku Weke Ezekpeazu, FCA, comments. So much legacy to be there. One or so is the one I'm talking about. Because there are physical structures that you will, I myself will come back still and see. Ah, so these things happen during our own tenure. Thank God for the leader. You know, so let me begin that this campus or this university will be full of projects that this administration has started and completed. In terms of accountability, there are scorecards that will show you that this administration has been accountable. You know, um, some assessment that was done recently by the ICPC, this university has ranked very well. Several years, first, second, you know, so that shows these are indicators of uh, uh, good governance. Legacy of serving to mankind. Well, there's no doubt that the Federal University of Agriculture, Belkota, is living up to its mandate. And uh, we are encouraged by the, the various landmark achievements they have made over the years and are still making. And that we commend the university for. Are you satisfied with what you have done within the five year tenure allowable for you? Let me say that I'm satisfied with my achievements so far. And when I say I'm satisfied, it doesn't mean that I've done everything perfectly well. It doesn't mean that I've done everything 100% correct. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, by self-assessment, all those things are listed as achievements, are things that are going to impact on the life of all stakeholders in this university. The point that I know is that no individual can complete the task or not. And if you are given a five-year tenure, you should know 
در طبط پایگیش مارتن دو باید شان بایدیش در پشن تو لرس هم تین تو کانتریبوت این فیچر دیپندین آن ایش بیشان آن میشان فر می ای شد می گوش آن اچیب ایوی اشپیت آن می گوش پریس کوپن این تو دو فیچر What is your uppermost desire for the Federal University of Agriculture at Beokuta? If we can be the best in the world, I will, I will really want that. But let me be modest. At least, in, I hope that we should get to the level of uh, being among the first 50 or 100 universities in the world. This is uh, a 2021 to 2025 strategic plan for the university, you know. It's because we have vision that we have been able to put this together. There are many institutions that do not wrong, are wrong with strategic plan. But we, this was developed last year. And uh, within the next uh, four years, five years, if things that are in there are well implemented, so now you find a fit among the topmost universities in the world. Having come to the conclusion that he has done what he wanted done within the allowable time frame, with evidence of visible performance, it is not out of place to put him in the thoughts of Frank Lloyd Wright, who says, I quote, I know the prize of success, dedication, hard work, and an unremitting devotion to the things you want to see happen. End of quote. Indeed, Professor Felix Kolaole Salako knew the prize of success and he has delivered along the mindset of this quote from Thomas Jefferson. Nothing can stop the man with the right mental attitude from his goal. What a parting message for a finished job of a man worthy of emulation and elevation to a higher ground.